What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Long Days with Giannis Pappas, your favorite Fediverse owner, your favorite CEO of the Fediverse. I am the Mark Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg Akis of the Metaverse, where you come inside to my world and reality is a suggestion. We have a good time and we ride the wave of the algorithm in and out. Sometimes we get taken over by a tidal wave. And that tidal wave is a bunch of 18 year olds with purple hair who aren't Whitney Cummings sitting somewhere in Palo Alto or the Silicon Valley going, and then we get one decision overturned because of Joe Rogan uh, talking about me on his episode. Guess what? YouTube overturned it and said it was an overcorrection. And now I'm seeking to find out from YouTube what the infraction was on the other episode because we know it was Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber, even though he said it, he said that word, he made those videos, I can't talk about it with my black co-host. Hmm. Speaking of Justin Bieber, he just bought a $1.8 million cartoon gorilla. Three million? 1.3. 1.3, I'm sorry. Does it really matter when it's 1.3? He could afford 1.8, he paid 1.3. Something smells fishy. When someone can afford a 1.3 cartoon gorilla to use on his profile pic and other people are eating their clothes to, like moths to survive, that means we're headed for just a nice future. Tom Brady's not retiring. What a perfect example of how the digital media rushes to be the first to a story. The kid probably didn't even finish his morning poop. Before the whole media just put him into an old folks home where the kid almost had an MVP season, could have been the MVP. He ain't ready, Bubba. He ain't ready to just sit down and stare at Giselle and watch success and reruns. It's not happening. The kid's still good. He's drinking baby blood. He's got plenty left. You'll see him back in Tampa. You'll see me in Tampa February 10th. Get those tickets, one show. You'll also see me at Soul Joe's this weekend, right now when you're watching this. No, coming weekend, I'll be at Soul Joe's on February 5th. One show in the Philly area at Jeffersonville, Pennsylvania. Apple's doing just fine. Apple's doing just fine. Record quarter they had people are ordering those eye watches so they can take their heart oxygen levels every three seconds and also you never know when you're going to get stranded in the middle of an ocean and need uh somebody in an apple t-shirt to rescue you those commercials are really low-hanging fruit but they're working uh, Canada truck drivers are on a strike and Justin Trudeau has been moved to a neutral location because he's not scared of this fringe group that uh, happens to be every single truck driver from America driving into Canada and Canadian truck drivers. But as according to Justin Trudeau, it's just a few neo-Nazis behind the wheel. <laughs> Erica Jane's free! Erica Jane's free, ladies! Can I get a yas? Can I get a weekend like her? Can we say it wasn't her? She had no idea what her husband was doing. She had nothing to do with it. She's free! I can't wait to see Andy Cohen interview her. I'm not gonna watch it because I don't watch that channel. Because I'm a man, I'm watching sports. I still, yes, there's still a few straight guys left. I passed a couple 12-year-olds 12 12 on the street talking football, and my first thought was, don't worry, guys. Stray kids are still being born. This is Long Days, and let's take a second to find out what's a dollar. Yeah, those Apple Watch commercials, 
are really a lot of people haven't seen them yet because nobody's watching television but if you're watching television i don't know if you could miss them they've been on a playoff game um they've been during playoff game blocks of commercial time and they're basically if you haven't seen them i think they're real audio from people it's been, i don't know if i'm watching the first 48 or from watching a commercial <laughs> i don't know if i'm watching a true crime doc on YouTube late at night or if I'm watching an iPhone commercial. I watch commercial. Um, but these are I watch commercials where they just play the audio from people stranded who need help who use their iWatch to uh, get help, right? And they basically just roll footage like it's a Cialis commercial <laughs> of nature scenes. <laughs> A little more ominous. It's a little more ominous. Yeah, they have, they have like a little ominous uh, music in the back. And basically, they're just scaring you in, into getting an eye watch. And it works. The agency should get a raise. Yes, it, they should. And it shows you that fear is stronger than reason always. And that you can always use one thing as an example, no matter how far-fetched that example is. Because one guy's stranded in the middle of the ocean, okay? <laughs> and... People are probably watching that going like, you never know, dude. You never know when I'm just going to be alone in the ocean. Now, if you're alone in the ocean and you don't know where you are, um, I don't know if you deserve a rescue at that point. <laughs> you know, And I also don't believe that that wasn't set up to sell the iWatch. Because who the hell is just taking a dip in the ocean? <laughs> And how are you getting cell phone reception in the middle of the osh? Okay, I there's a few blocks where I live where there is no cell phone reception, and I live in New York State. Um, I don't think the cell phone towers are reaching uh, coordinates of the ocean meridian meridian measurements. <laughs> and in the commercial, the guy who's in the ocean without a life jacket apparently. Um, is like uh, get the 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 person who's rescuing him, the operator on the other line, who I assume is just a a guy in a blue shirt who works at an Apple store. <laughs> you think it's a genius? Yeah, I just think it's the genius bar. And then I think the who rescues him is you just see a bunch of guys in blue shirts running towards him. They're just running on the coastline, being, "We're here. What can I help you with? What issue are you having?" And he's like, "I'm dying." And they're like, okay, give us a second. Let, let us have your watch to look at it and we'll give it back. That's who comes to the rescue. Just a bunch of teenagers in blue shirts like this. It's just Steve Jobs' cult army that shows up on the shoreline and swims out to you and pulls you in. But I mean, what's the guy doing in the middle of the ocean? Was, How do you get in the middle of the ocean? He was a kiteboarder or something and he got blown out. And he got blown out. Okay. If you're a kiteboarder and you go kiteboarding by yourself and you get blown out in the middle of the ocean, you know, is it going to be counted as a COVID death? <laughs> uh -oh. Allegedly, it's a joke. I'm not suggesting. I'm not suggesting. I'm not making light of... Uh, I'm just saying, dude, there's people more deserving than this guy. But I'm glad he got rescued. And I'm, I, I have an Apple Watch. I have an Apple Watch. And I never thought of the reason that I had it was in case I get blown away. I get fall out of my boat. But, you know, this could have saved a lot of people. Ghislaine Maxwell's father um, w died in the ocean. Somehow he fell off his boat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, there was another famous actress who, there's a few people who've just tripped off their boats when there was other people on it. And, uh, you know, that's always, uh, that's always, that's always when that happens. You know, it's like when uh, someone goes missing off a cruise ship, they just fell. There's uh, you know, there's a wife, there's a wife who, you know, there's life insurance on and there's a guy who happens to be having an affair with another woman and his wife just falls. She falls off of Carnival Cruise Line. There's Those decks are really slippery. You gotta be really careful. Do you know what you have to do to fall off a Carnival Cruise Line? And this has happened a bunch of times. And it always ends up that the husband has like a life insurance policy or is having an affair or something. And he's just always distraught. He's like, I don't know, she went out for like a nighttime smoke. 
And you know, her eyesight's not good. She probably just missed, she took a misstep. It happens all the time. She, you know, she took a misstep over that 18 foot railing <laughs> that you could really only get her over if you pick her up by the ankles and flip. She just missed up over it. She just took a misstep over that 18 foot railing. So I don't know if I buy this commercial. I don't know if I just buy a guy in the middle of the ocean without cameras rolling beforehand going, <laughs> okay, do you know your lines? You feel free to improvise, but remember, you're stranded in the middle of the ocean and the only thing that can get service in the middle of the ocean is your eye watch. And I love how they just, they figure out where he is. They're like, okay, we're tracing your eye watch. You know, here we go. We found it. Yeah, I just watched a documentary on Netflix about this con artist. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. It's incredible. You know what I'm talking about? We talked about it last time. Yeah, I mean, he gets these women to like to leave their families for like a decade while he just milks them of money, and they can't find him. They cannot locate him. They never can locate him. They can't find him. But you're telling me you can find this guy in the middle of the ocean because of his eye watch? I mean, it just may. Uh, what's the name of it? It's called. Puppet Master? Puppet Master. You got to watch this. Like, this dude is the smoothest guy in the world. And now, apparently, like, the funny thing about the documentary is it ends where he's still got a woman. We, they're interviewing her kids, and her kids are going, we just want our mom back. And <laughs> he supposedly conned his way into being, like, someone who sells, um, like, purebred dogs that are show dogs. <laughs> so he convinced whoever that he's, like, a dog expert and they can't even locate him and the mother. They, they can't find this guy. They can't find his coordinates. Then at the end, they finally do with a detective agency. But it takes like years to locate this guy. But, you know, this guy buys one eye watch. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> the eye watch will, will track you down no matter where you are. I love those eye wash commercials. They're just going to keep going. Like, huh? just, everyone's going to be like, huh? I've fallen. I fell off a skyscraper. Hell. Yeah, those are basically just that I've fallen and I can't yeah, get up. I've fallen and I can't get up. Uh, I am 87 years old. It's just an Okay, update. sir. Sir, where are you? I'm on a floor. I'm on a floor. Where, sir? I don't know. Sir, our iPhone has located you in your own address at your own house. I, uh, do you have dementia, sir? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, that's the thing that would be funny if all like uh, the kids of parents with Alzheimer's just get them eye watches <laughs> and then the eye watch uh, emergency service gets flooded with calls where am I I don't know where I am <laughs> it's like sir you're safe you're in your own home again you're still home no I'm in a room I don't recognize any of this um that would be that would be a way that you know maybe a rival like Samsung. What you could do is get a bunch of old people, buy a bunch of eye watches, and give them away free to people with Alzheimer's, just so they can call con and then make sure to tell them, look, if you don't know where you are, call the emergency services of, of Apple and let them know, and their lines would just be flooded with Alzheimer's patients going, I don't know where I am. You know, so probably a lot truer to life. A lot truer to life. Yeah, my point is like there's a very slim chance in Toto, there's a very slim chance you're ever going to be stranded in the middle of the ocean, <laughs> you know. But if you are a former member of the Mossad who also owns a media company and you threaten the Mossad or you threaten Israel or whatever, like I think Ghislaine Maxwell's dad probably did. He was probably like, hey, man, I know too much. And they go... You used to know too much. Now you're swimming with the fishes. Um, because that's what happened to her father, and um, it's suspected that he was Mossad. Um, and I think what happened was he, he got a little lippy, he got a little mouthy, and uh, allegedly, this is conspiracy theory. I'm talking. I'm not saying definitely he was pushed off a boat. People fall all the time off a boat. He probably went was, for a dip. He, he went, went for a dip. He went for a dip in the dangerous waters of the <laughs> Pacific Ocean. The shark infested Pacific Ocean. He got a little hot headed. He was like, it's a little warm in here. Let me take a dip. Yeah. 
You know, he took a little dip and then he was like, oh, wow, I forgot there's no ladder. You're not supposed to do this. I forgot about currents. You know, he just had a little lapse. He thought he was in the shallow end, you know? He was like, oh, yeah, wait a second. I can't see a coastline. This probably wasn't a good idea. I may drown now. And then there was someone on his boat who helicoptered in off some military plane who just watched him and giggled. Said, can you help me? And they said, I can't help right now. I can't help. I have orders not to help. (laughs) My orders are not to help. My orders are for this to be an accident. I'm sorry. I am sorry. Can someone else comment in the comment roulette? What's going on? There's one person who just is fucking throwing comments. Uh Oh. Um, So make sure you get yourself an Apple Watch. I had a good time in Los Angeles. I was there. That's why we're late. Apologies. Um, but you know, it was worth it. Uh, Tim Dillon episode is out. It's incredible. That was a true story. We did go on that. We did go on that meeting. Um, Substack. Substack meeting. It was really funny. So Tim goes, just come with me to this. It was sort of like when, yeah, like I said, when Ben Affleck shows up for Matt Damon, (laughs) you know? So you should have seen their face when, uh, when I showed up with him, they just went like, oh, (laughs) <laughs> I went, oh, and they were like, yeah, this is my friend Giannis. And they're like, oh, oh hi. Uh, I guess we should get another table? And he's like, yeah, I got another table. <laughs> and Mr. Pokeball's like, get, yeah, I got another table. And then we sat down and he's like, okay, let's see. He cuts right to it. He goes like, so, $220 million. And, they, and one guy goes, ooh, you're cutting right to the chase. He goes, yeah, I mean, come on. Let, uh, you know, we all got real friends we want to see. So, let you know. <laughs> Let's, this is before the appetizers. It, it, yeah, the appetizers didn't even show. We didn't even order yet. He got into it. We didn't even order. Like, no small talk straight to it. And he guys, quite honestly, you know, pro- it's money you guys probably don't have. You know, I can see your dress. It's $12. <laughs> <laughs> and then we left. The moment we left, one guy was in the middle of the sentence. And he goes, guys, I got a spot at the comedy store. We got to go. Thank you. Thank you. And he goes, we'll keep talking. Yes, we'll keep talking. We'll keep talking. And... um then of course we made a podcast about it. <laughs> <laughs> the price just went up. Yeah, I mean it was really interesting because he knew, he knew, he knew it was a waste of time, and he knew, you know, they were trying to sell him on the dream. And at one point, one guy does go, "We well, we'd want you." They go, "What are you, what is your what are your goals?" And he like, "What do you want?" And he's like. Money. <laughs> it's my Tim Dillard impersonation. Money. Money. <laughs> you know, what did they think he was going to do? Like, I, I'm just, I really love what you guys are doing over there. You know, I just love to come over there, give you guys all that press, you know, sh- you know, blaze a path for other comedians to come over, have it be a major story that the number two show on Patreon, he's the number two show or number one or number two show. He's the number one comedy show, I think, on Patreon. Right. Right. So, yeah, I'm just going to. And he's like, well, how are they treating you over there, Patreon? And he's like, you know, the, the money shows up in the account. Right. You know, he's like, he's like, yeah, they, you know, they email me once in there and they're like, oh, they only email you. It's like, what do you want them to do? <laughs> so, you know, what do you want me to do? Send me a masseuse once in a while? Like yeah. the money shows up in the account. That's all. That's treating me pretty good. That's all he needs from them. Yeah. That's, I don't need anything else from them. I don't need them to check my blood pressure. <laughs> I need them to send the money. <laughs> what are you guys going to do for me? Wow, what we'll do for you is, you know, we collect everything in an email list and it's all centralized. I said on his podcast, I said, they were basically saying, hey, wouldn't it be great to just, you know how your stuff is just accessible everywhere on all platforms? Wouldn't it be great to just hide it with us? <laughs> wouldn't it be better if you, you know, your fans had to find it in one place right. as opposed to just being everywhere where they could find it at their convenience? Wouldn't that be great? What are you offering? A dream, you know, the dream. Yeah. You know, they, come, they, come join all the other classical liberal journalists. Classical liberal journalists now are basically disgruntled former liberals who are now conservative. <laughs> just call yourself conservative, guys. We get it. You're conservative. You don't, just because you want to keep a few friends that you still had in the days where you used to lean left when it was cool, when it was counter, because left used to be counter. Now right is counter. A lot of these people now are are right because it's cool, you know? Because left used to be cool because it was a little, it was more raging against the machine. Now the machine is like completely left. So now being right is like cool, but they don't want to call themselves right, you know? So they always go like classical liberal. 
people say that about comics too, but it's like, no, comedians, comedians are comedians, you know? You know, once I start going like making points on one side, I'm not a comedian anymore, but my numbers will go up. But, you know, so the journalists, though, it's funny. They're like, you know, I'm a classical liberal. And it's, they always go like, you know what? We need to totally put all these Mexicans across the border. They should be catapulted back over a wall. I'm not saying Trump's wall. I'm saying a regular wall. I mean, let's let's be honest. Biden, Biden uh, uh, Obama, Obama deported more more illegals than anybody. I'm just saying we got to catapult them, you know, catapult them hopefully so they die on the other end so we don't have to. But I'm a classical liberal. I'm a classical liberal. It's completely understandable. You know, we need to increase our military budget and completely we need to arm Saudi Arabia as much as possible because of the threat of Iran. I'm a classical liberal. I'm a classical liberal, okay? I'm a classical liberal. Abortion's bad. These are bad decisions that people are making. Okay, those people should be shot in the street by by you know by AOC uh, task force or whatever task force. But I am a classical liberal. At the end of the day, I'm pro life only because I believe in science. But I'm a classical liberal. I'm a classical liberal. That's the new kind of cover, you know. Yeah. For like any issue that you may have that that goes right, you just go, hey, but I'm a classical liberal. It's like, come on, just 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 say it. Just you what you, you you've you've been on Tucker Carlson twenty times. <laughs> <laughs> you know they always go, that's because the other side won't invite me. I don't know about that. I'm not sure. It's possible. I mean, it's possible that only that only Tucky gives you the gives you the um the invite. The bow tie man. The bow tie. It's possible. I also, if I ever say anything that comes off right, just remember, I'm a classical liberal. Right. I'm a, a classical liberal. What is classical liberal? That means like a, what does it mean, classical liberal? They're just trying to distinguish themselves from the progressives, right? Yeah, they say they have liberal values. They have liberal values. I'm socially liberal, fiscally conservative. I'm a classical liberal. Everyone who's rich is, uh, everyone's rich who has a daughter <laughs> Everyone who's rich who has a daughter that they want to like them, they don't want problems with their daughter who's going to some liberal private school, you know, where guilt is flying around, where they just come in and they go like, we have to just take care of all the immigrants. And so the dad's going, and going, dad, what's your politics? Yeah. And dad's got like, dad's like a multimillionaire real estate investor. He goes, okay, okay, honey, sweetie, baby. Daddy is socially liberal fiscally conservative now will you get off my back okay because i'll just say anything about social lib i don't care about the social issues all right look i own a section eight building okay i am a bleeding heart yes yes i also have hedged my bed and own a bunch of private properties as well but i also have one section eight building do i not care about the poor people that's the reason why i have that building not because it's completely recession proof and i get compensated very well by the government who pays for that because you know the government pays the landowner the section eight portion section eight means the government pays a big portion of the rent for you and you pay like 50 bucks so if you're a real estate developer it's a, always a nice tax write-off to give a few computers to a local to, to a local community center. They don't just do it out of the goodness of their heart. It's a sweet tax write-off, baby. And you know, there's nobody who just owns a Section Eight building. They own a Section Eight building, a couple townhouses in Georgetown, a couple of buildings in New York City couple of let's say uh new developments in phoenix arizona you know so the world is messy but if, if you want me to be socially liberal i'm socially liberal sweetheart okay tell your friends i'm socially liberal they can come over here with your purple hair and we can talk about issues and how elizabeth warren is <laughs> just is you know did what she had to do for the native american people sometimes you go a little too far Okay? Sometimes the best way to get issues accomplished is to be, you know, to fib a little bit. To just say I am Native American as well in solidarity. To be in solidarity with the people you're going to help. Sure. Sure. Now let's go eat lobster at Avra. 
Let's go to a five-star Greek restaurant, and uh, I'll say that you guys were business associates. <laughs> As I write this dinner that I had with my daughter and her liberal teenage friends off because I'm socially liberal. We're sitting here in Avra, and I'm feeding the junior class of Spence boarding school. But it was a business meeting. As far as Uncle Sam knows. Guys, Green Chef is a CCOF certified meal kit company that me and Jesse absolute love. Uh, We absolutely love it. We both have used it regularly. It makes eating so easy with the plans that fit every lifestyle. They really do. Uh, Whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking for more balanced meals, you got to go with Green Chef because they offer just a range of recipes that really suit whatever your preference is. It's really amazing. How amazing is it? It's like perfect. They cut everything into the perfect proportions. You put it together. It makes you feel like you're cooking, but all the hard work is done, really. That's right, yeah. Yeah. You feel like you're on a cooking show. You're putting on a cooking show, but everything's done for you and portioned out, so you don't got to throw anything away. And uh, you cook it yourself. Uh, It's just everything's pre-portioned, which is great. There's no excess you got to throw away. The meal's perfect. Um, So you actually reduce your food waste by at least 25% um, compared to grocery shopping. It's just so much easier to get it right to you in in the exact proportions to make the exact meals that you select. You select, oh, I want to eat this, this, and this, this this week. And it comes to you and you cook it, you put it together, and it's fun. You do it with your wife, you do it with your girlfriend, you do it with your boyfriend, you do it with your husband. You do it by yourself if you're a bachelor. And you do it with your boyfriend or your partner if you're scared to tell your parents you're gay. This is my roommate. You still can do it. With whatever your situation is, you can use Green Chef. It makes cooking so easy. You spend less time stressing. I can't endorse this company enough. You know, you get these pre-made, pre-measured sauces, dressing, spices, Um It's all curated for you. It's America's number one meal kit right now because it's great. This is an easy one to sell again. um, They got all types of options like you carb conscious, gluten free. You go select it. You take a look. All the produce is premium. Uh, Everything is fresh. Um, They offer 35 nutritious and flavorful options to choose from every single week. You'll find something within 35 options. Um, This features premium clean ingredients that are seasonally sourced for peak freshness. This is all primo ingredients, my friends. Uh, They always change uh, variety. These easy to follow recipes from expert chefs. You cannot go wrong because you feel like you're cooking it. But really the chef put it together for you to put together, which is my, my, that's my style. Um, So you get to cook. But it's not as it's not as messy and it's not as hard. And you get to cook better than you would cook, which is the best part about it. So very, very easy. All you have to do is go to Green Chef, all one word, G-R-E-E-N-C-H-E-F dot com slash fumes one thirty. All one word. With the fumes, F-U-M-E-S, of course, one thirty. Use the promo code fumes one thirty, and you get hundred and thirty bucks off. Plus free shipping, which is which is big. You don't got to pay uh, free shipping. So go enjoy Green Chef right now at greenchef.com slash fumes130 and get your $130 off plus your free shipping right now. This is a no-brainer. Everyone should use it. Just, you know, evolve. So LA was great. I stayed at Whitney's house. I broke up a dog fight. First night I got there, um... Whitney's been bitten everywhere. I mean, she looks like she was a prostitute and she met Marv Albert. (laughs) Whitney's been bitten by dogs all over her body. She almost lost her thumb. She has a couple puncture wounds in her leg. Okay. She's a girl who likes to rescue a lot of these big dogs, former fighting dogs. And, you know, she goes... Whitney's a perfect example of how... Even when you're a bleeding heart for social issues, which in a lot of ways I consider myself to be. My mom taught me that way. I think it's good. I think every kid should do social work just to understand mental illness and poverty and all those things. It's good. It's good for society. I think we should take care of old people, things like that. Healthcare, people should, you know, not have to pay $9 million if they go. They don't. Have to, they shouldn't have to sell their house if they have cancer or if they need a pill, it shouldn't cost $3,000, okay? 
Uh, I believe in that stuff in, in some way, right? Call me whatever you want. Um, but here's the problem when you're a bleeding heart in a lot of ways. There's no end to it. It just is endless. It just, you can always rationalize away the uncomfortable truths based on contravening evidence that a lot of this stuff is choice or culture or mental illness or psychosis, same thing as mental illness. You know, you can always just make it a systemic problem, but really it's like, let's just be honest. I'm a dog lover beyond all dog lovers, okay? Outside of comedy, it's one of my passions. I like chess, I like sports, I like dogs, and I like comedy. That's really about it. I like like three people, I like my wife, I like my kid, and that's it, okay? But in being a dog liver, you have to admit, pit bulls are not cute rabbits, okay? Oftentimes, they're bred to fight. Dogs are bred for a job. Pit bulls are bred to, to, to wrestle. They're MMA fighters. <laughs> okay? They're the Khabib of dogs. They got to get it out one way or the other. Um, so when you have big dogs, and I remember this when I used to go, when I lived in Park Slope, Brooklyn, you go to the park in Prospect Park, there'd be off-leash hours in the morning because all the dog, dog lovers petition for it. Now, dog parks are not great for big dogs. Okay? They're not great in general. Dogs are a pack species that have a pecking order, and they challenge each other, okay? They pack up with other dogs who they like based on that order, male, female, alpha, you know, omega. They do do that, all right? If you if these dogs were to go back in the wild, that's what happens. That's how dingoes happened in Australia. And then they they, they form packs again. And that's, that's how packs survive, you know, with an order. They need a leader, et cetera. So what happens when you go to those dog parks is some dogs will pack up, and then the new dogs show up, and it's basically like the the yard and dog jail, right? There's guys that have been there longer, and by guys I mean dogs, so they're doing harder time. And then the new guy comes in. Some lab with a handkerchief around his <laughs> neck. Basically, like, can we just be honest? Like labs are basically the white people of dogs, okay? If you got a lab, it's sort of like that guy, that, that lab, he's, it's like a wasp from Connecticut, okay? He's coming in, he likes to swim in lakes. You know, wasps are always swimmers. They're always on the <laughs> swim team. That's what labs are. They walk in, and then you got a bunch of urban dogs, you know, from the city. Bunch of, you know, pit bulls are like, yo, what's up, man? They just show up at that lab, and they're like, you new here. What are you in for? And they're like, ah, you know, tax fraud. I'm in for a little tax fraud pyramid scheme. And he's like, what are you in for? And they're like, I chewed a baby's face off. Murder. This is my owner some 24 year old hipster girl who wants to rescue every fighting dog because she watched the Michael Vick documentary and she wants to fit it with her friends. Uh, you see her over there scrolling her phone talking about how AOC is the queen. Yeah, she's not paying attention to me. So I'm gonna eat you. <laughs> I'm gonna attack you now. Why? Because I'm a pit bull. So pit bulls are fighting dogs. You get one of those things. You can't have a bleeding heart. Powerful dogs like that don't respond to bleeding hearts. And generally, they respond better to male energy. It's just a fact. That's nature. I know it's not woke to say. I know it's not woke to say. But, you know, in the pecking order, unless you're a hyena, it's usually a dude at the top. Why? Because of nature. We got testosterone and we're stronger than you. You want to fight? I'll fight 98% of the female population. Okay, I have no problem with that. 2% of you that are MMA fighters or weightlifters, you win. But 98% of you, I will take. 98% of guys, I will lose to. So there you have it, okay? Biology plays a role. Things are anatomically anchored for a reason. So usually, if you get a big dog, and that's why when you rescue dogs, they say experienced owner. If you're getting a Ridgeback, <laughs> if you're getting, Ridgebacks used to fight lions. Whitney has a Ridgeback pit bull. Whitney, yeah. please. Okay, you have it walking around with no collar on. I couldn't even <laughs> grab it when they were fighting. You can't have a big dog. God damn it. Now these people can't hear me. Put a collar on the dog at least. <laughs> so if they fight, there's something to grab. 
So when you're a bleeding heart, like, and Whitney's a, she's a, she, she was yeah. a basketball player. She's like 5'10", 5'11". She's a strong girl. Yeah. But, you know, she's a bleeding heart. And she's very good with dogs. But, you know, you got two female dogs, you know, and their rescues, pit bulls, pit bull ridgeback mix. Oh, my God. You know, you, you get one of, one of her other dogs is a pit bull. Um, uh, what are the big dogs called? The biggest ones. What, like a... Uh, uh, Great Dane. She has Dane. a Great Dane <clears throat> pit bull mix. Mm -hmm. The thing is a horse, okay? <laughs> she was telling me, her and her boyfriend were telling me the other time that all four of them just attacked each other. And that was when Whitney got bit in the leg. They couldn't, they couldn't get him off. It was like just her and her boyfriend trying to separate them. And they just fight, 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 fight. It's like a Royal Rumble. It's like, dude, it's... Yeah, I mean, when I went up into her bedroom, I, I, I just... Am I like, am I on Michael Vick's estate in 1997? <laughs> So how many dogs are there? I don't know, dude. I, I, yeah, like some, over ten? No, there was like there's four or five. Four or five. Yeah, yeah. and then there was a little dog. He got attacked. Oh, they had no. to remove him from the house because the big dog bit him in the face and popped his eyes out. Oh my god! So and those two dogs are still in the same room, except one of them has to be held. <laughs> it's like you know the bleed. I understand. I love dogs too. I love dogs too. I really love dogs. I've had big ones. I had a, you know, a pit boxer mix. Then I had Gilda, you remember? She was a wild, like, Basenji kind of, what know what kind of Egyptian wild dog she was. They were big dogs. They got to a point where I stopped bringing them to the dog park because they would just get into fights all the time. Because you can't just go to a dog park with grown-up adults. Puppies will roll on their back and be submissive. But when they grow up, they challenge each other, especially the same sexes. You have a better chance... And male and female, okay? If you have a male and female, and sometimes they don't get along. Dogs don't like each other, and they don't have a reason. They just sniff each other's ass, and they go, I don't like you, dog. There's no, like, dogs can't fake it. Dogs can't go, like, dogs, it's not Hollywood. Hollywood, everyone's pretending to like each other. Dogs don't do that. They're animals. They don't like you. They don't. They say it. They say it right there. It's very. Dogs are very New York about it. Because New York is the realest town. They go, hey, dude, I don't like your vibe. I don't like you, dog. And they're going, wait a second. We can make a lot of money together. Just, you know, whatever. It's business. And they're going, That's, I'm, I keeps it real. I can't pretend. This is who I am. So I think in Hollywood, sometimes people get it twisted. You know, like we all just kind of get along. We all sue each other and then go to lunch. It's like, no, a dog that bites another dog's face off and pops his eyes out, those two dogs should never be in the same room together. And if you have a little dog like that, you can't have them around dogs that fight, okay? And if you have dogs that fight, you have to control those dogs all the time. Bully sticks, food. They gotta eat separate. You gotta control them. You gotta make them sit before their bowl comes. You gotta, you gotta, they have to have so much structure that they know that you are in control all the time. You cannot have those dogs making their own decisions ever, 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 ever. And if two dogs don't get along, guess what? The chances are they're not gonna get along. They're just not. Okay, you gotta introduce them early as puppies. And, and, and it, you know, it, there's a whole thing with dogs. And, and dogs, can be dangerous and I love dogs and sometimes they get a bad rep because they don't have an experienced owner who knows all this and they attack everywhere and yes that dog's you know if you want to say politically correct it's like a big powerful dog or you know because whenever you see these dog rescues they're like you know he's a big dog mm -hmm. you know they, instead of saying like this dog could kill you <laughs> you know we need an experienced owner who's had big dogs before right have you owned a, uh, a uh, what are they course what are they called course kangos what are they called there's a big dog that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, whatever no, they're no, Corsica, yeah. Kanga, whatever they're Yeah. Called. Yeah. Have you owned a, a. Rottweiler? Yeah. Have you owned a Rottweiler before? Have you owned an Afghani, you know, <laughs> Afghani, like those Afghani fucking, uh, you know, hunting dogs? Have you owned one of those before? A Cane Corso. That's what they're called. Cane Corso. Have you, right. owned, a, have you owned a Cane Corso before? Um, if you have, please inquire. Otherwise. <laughs> This dog doesn't, they always go, this dog prefers to be the only dog. You ever notice when they say right, that? Yeah. This dog prefers. Yeah. What they're basically saying is like, don't have any babies or other dogs around this dog, you know? And that's the politically correct language of the bleeding heart adoption world. Um, and that, that's why it's like, you have to have a limit to your bleeding heart and understanding. And there's gotta come a point where you gotta be realistic, where you go like, these two dogs can't be in the same house together. Uh, or I need to do more to provide structure and dominance over these dogs so they know what to do, when to do, and I'm making decisions all the time. 
you know, for the dog's sake and for your leg's sake. So I don't walk around looking like I was a victim of Marv Albert. <laughs> Wait, is she fostering or is this? She fosters uh-huh. and she also, so she's constantly got dogs coming in, right. which I applaud. Yeah. I mean, look, great. A lot of these dogs deserve a chance, but you got, you know, there is that, you know, when you, and then you meet certain dog guys who get it and they're great. They're like, look, you can't have this dog. I'm not giving this pit bull to a 17 year old girl who thinks it's cool to rescue pit bulls. You know, pit bulls are bred to fight. Usually they prefer fucking up other animals, but babies, dogs, gen- all dogs have issues with babies because of their size, they're small and their energy, the way they pull the tails and shit like that. Like with my daughter, it's like very strict with my dog. And my dog's the sweetest, but my dog's a rescue. My dog is a mutt from Puerto Rico that was rescued for a storm. Um, I'm a very educated and experienced dog owner and I love it and I'm realistic about it and I'm a man and my dog's a female. So with my dog, I brought my baby home. First thing my dog did was growl because it was a new, my dog always growls at anything coming in because she's a watchdog. Those are her instincts. Mm -hmm. It's an animal. I let the dog know right away with my energy. Like I'll throw you in the fire. (laughs) Like that's a no. And then there's a lot of sniffing and having my daughter feed it. My daughter now feed, my daughter's not even, you know, my daughter today was feeding her treats and you know, I, and I watch mm-hmm. all the time, whenever the dog, never are they allowed. And then whenever my dog, if, if my daughter's hitting the dog in a wrong way, like, you know, or even sees me scratching it and then goes, that's why I try to pet now. I don't try, to, when my daughter can see, I try not to do this. Mm-hmm. Cause my daughter once was like squeezing the dog and I correct immediately, correct, correct, correct. If she's behind the dog, I kind of, I intervene cause the dog gets spooked, you know? So you have to watch it until the daughter gets it. And so I'm teaching my daughter now, like, look, this dog is protects our family because that's what she does. She, you know, she's a watchdog. This dog loves you unconditionally, but you have to respect the animal, the wolf, the 99% wolf that it is, you know? This isn't, uh, this isn't a little, you know, and even the little ones will bite the, the kids. Mm-hmm. Like even a little, uh, you know, whatever, one of those little woman dogs. Yeah, wiener dog. Yeah, they'll, anyone will bite a kid if mm-hmm. you fuck with it. But if you have a bigger dog, it'll do damage. And kids get bit all the time by dogs because parents don't know what they're doing and they don't treat them like a dog, okay? They're pulling them in the bed, they're on the couch, they're fucking everywhere. It's like, my dog doesn't go on couches, my dog knows this is your place, the, the humans sit here, this is, and the dog's happy. The dog feels comfortable in that order, you know? So, um, welcome to Caesar Milan's podcast. <laughs> I'm just passionate about it, so I'm talking. I had the Marv Albert joke in there. That was good enough. Yeah, you got that one off. Yeah, yeah. that was a good one, too. <laughs> that was a good one. Everyone should be getting ready to travel right now. You know, things are going to be opening up. You got to get out there. You got to travel, go to different countries. Got to learn another language. It's good for your brain. It is good for you. Makes you more sophisticated. You can pick up chicks in other languages from other countries. Widen your net. You're not having... You're not having a good time, uh, you know, a good track record with just Americans. Wide the net. Learn some of the other romance languages. Some of the goodies. Go to those countries and pick up chicks. Also, when you travel, you'll be able to speak a little bit more. Ingratiate yourself to the natives with Babbel. I love Babbel. I use it. I'm brushing up on the old Espanol. I like to really exercise my brain. We should all be speaking two languages. Um, Babbel's got 10 million subscribers right now. They are the best in the business. They give you these 15-minute little bite-sized lessons that make it a perfect way to learn a new language on the go, my friends. Um, Other languages app just use AI for their lesson plans, but what makes Babbel special, and this is true, is that their lessons were created by over 100 language experts. So it's really tailored for people because it's made by people. Uh, it's scientifically proven to be effective. Um, that's why it's so popular. You can choose from 14 different languages, like I said, all the good ones, including other ones, Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Okay, German doesn't sound the best, but it's good to know. They got a nice big economy. So um, they also have speech recognition technology that helps you improve pronunciation and your accent, which you can impress people with. Um, There's so many ways to learn with Babbel. I love using it for Spanish. Uh, In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, video stories, and uh, they even have live classes. It's really, uh, there's a lot of ways that Babbel offers depending on how you learn and what you want to do, um, including those 15-minute lessons um, that really just make it uh, fun and easy. It comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. That's how confident they are and how good it is. And it is. I use it, so you can trust me. 
Um, so start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Go, start. Give yourself something productive to do. Don't just sit around scrolling videos. Learn a language. So right now you can purchase a three-month Babbel subscription and you'll get an additional three months for free. Okay, that's what happens when you listen to Yanni Long Days. You get that deal. That's six months for the price of three. You heard that right. Great deal. Just go to Babbel.com. Use the promo code Long Days, all one word. Babbel.com, B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Promo code Long Days, all one word. Language for life. <laughs> you started with Whitney talking about She her. got bit all the time, yeah. yeah. So Whitney's going out. She's peeing on the floor outside <laughs> to, show, <laughs> to show. And I'm going like, I don't know if that was in Caesar's book. Because <laughs> she's got a little cute baby pit bull who's going to end up being like an 80-pound pit bull. And you can tell he's a, he's a, he's a, he's raw. You can tell. It's, I mean, dude, when you feel yeah. these like bread to fight pit bulls, their teeth. Yeah. I mean, dude, they're like knives. So with that dog, you, it really every time it bites, and she's good. Whitney knows a lot of that stuff. But, yeah, yeah. you know, dogs got to have collars on in case a fight breaks out. <laughs> At least collars. <laughs> There's also a piece of wood that you can get that I sent her the video of that like if a fight breaks out, first of all, you need the collar. First of all, the best way is to grab the hind legs. That's how we separated the fight that happened, which I'll tell you in a second. You pull by the hind legs. You ever put your hand in there? Hit, Whitney's hand was all in there. I'm surprised it didn't end up looking like a pizza because her hand was right in between them, their jaws. She uh -huh. was trying to get them, like pull the jaw off. That's not what you do. The dog's not thinking about you at that point. The dog is locked in and they're fighting and they don't even see you at that point. And then at one point, she goes, put your finger in its ass. <laughs> it's like, you're not going to be able to locate the ass at that point either. I, I could have, if I started... Before they fought with my finger in the dog's ass, yeah. I would have been able to wiggle it and get his attention. But I couldn't find the dog's <laughs> ass like a fucking guided <laughs> missile. During, they're fighting. They're full out fighting. I can't like, you know. Because, <laughs> you know, she wanted to startle it. And I'm sure that works to some extent. That's some old Brooklyn logic. I remember hearing that back in the days. You put your finger in the dog's ass. Yeah, no. What you got to do... That and you take a screwdriver and you pry open their mouth. Well, that's better. Yeah. I mean, that's going to hurt the dog. But there are these pieces of wood that you can get that, mm. that you know, these dog dog people know about. So you put that, like, if if they're clamped on something, then you put it in the side, mm -hmm. right? You get in there and you twist. Mm -hmm. And you twist. And at the same time, you use the collar to choke. So you twist the collar. So you get on top of it, mm -hmm. get on top of the dog. If he really's not letting go. And these dogs were locked on each other. Right, so thankfully they let go just from us pulling with the hinds. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't there, one of the dogs would have been dead. These were these are dog these are real dogs. They would have been dead. They're sweet otherwise, but these two dogs are female dogs. They don't like each other. Supposedly they've lived in the house with each other like four years too. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure they've gotten into a couple of scraps. It doesn't <laughs> just come out of nowhere, you know. You know. <laughs> the problem with idealism, and this is the world we live in now. And this is why so many people are extreme. And this is what's so worrisome. The problem with idealism is when you're an idealist, like a lot of kids are, you want to never have anything contradict your beliefs. That's the problem with beliefs. So any contravening evidence that may come up that contradicts your positions, what an idealist or a utopian will do will will rationalize away that contravening evidence. Oh, it's always this, you know? If, if you're like, oh, we need to defund the police and then crime goes up in high crime areas and AOC will go, oh, the high crime is up because of the pandemic and people can't eat. You know, rationalize away. Even though you're going like, hmm, this guy rolled up in a car and shot a guy in the, who was walking with his daughter in the head and drove off. What groceries was he trying to get in that scenario? And she'll go, systematic, police, they're killing everybody, blah, blah, because she doesn't want anything to threaten her utopian ideas. That's the problem with communist dictators, everything. They say we're doing this for the good, and then these other groups are like, we disagree with you, and then they're like, we'll just kill you for the greater good because you're, you are, you are interrupting my dream, my goal. That's what cult leaders do. You're going like, wait a second, this is, you go, don't mess with the dream. They get wide eyed and they're like, don't mess with this utopia. Because the problem with utopia is it doesn't exist. It's literally comes from a Greek word that means nowhere. The original meaning of utopia in Greek is nowhere. So it, it used to have a negative connotation, you know? Um, 
This is reality, where people kill each other, people fight over territories, where slavery was the way of the world up until England uh, outlawed it. Everywhere, everywhere. It was the norm. It's a, uh, life sucks. Humans are shit. Um, you know, that's the reality. The reality is not so pretty. The reality doesn't paint a pretty picture. And so you have to be realistic in order to govern, to own a dog, and to be emotionally stable. To remain emotionally stable, you have to be able to acknowledge uncomfortable truths that are less than idealistic. And these people can't, so they rationalize them away over and over again. And as they rationalize, they get pulled deeper and deeper down into the rabbit hole of extremism. And that's what extremists are. People who are unwilling, unwilling to hear any contravening evidence, hard evidence that would blow up their positions. Some of those positions come from a good place. Their ideals, things to strive for. But even Michael Jordan shot 50% from the field. Even the best hitters in baseball only hit 300, which means three out of 10 times at bat they get a hit. That's reality. Nothing is 10 out of 10 perfect, you know? And that's the problem. You know, that's what racists do. They go, oh, all these people, and then you show them a bunch of good people, and they go, oh, they're all like, they, they just block it out. They, go, they just block it out, and they go, I've already made, my belief is already set. My belief is already set. I'm rationalizing that away to something else. Uh, either I'm flat out ignoring it or I'm rationalizing it away. Racists are extremists. Uh, communists are extremists. Laissez-faire capitalists are extremists. You know, people who rescue dogs and ignore, <laughs> <laughs> ignore the realities of their animal nature are extremists. Okay. So they can't hear me in the live chat. So let me, because, you know, I got a call from someone I've been avoiding. <laughs> <laughs> so just give me a second to reboot. And I don't know how to put it on silent because Jared Harvin's not here and I'm a boomer. <laughs> I'm a boomer. So to get to the fun, yeah, she pees on the floor. So right in the middle of dinner, she went outside and just peed on the grass. She squatted and peed on the grass <laughs> to show the dog to be the pack leader. <laughs> Whitney's a lot of fun. She's I don't understand. Like, you know, you see, read the comments and people always making fun of her. She does not take herself seriously. She talks about her Botox. Whitney's very funny. You go to Hollywood. You go to Hollywood and make $30, $40 million or whatever she's made. You, you invent a TV show that succeeds. You write for one of the legends, Rosette. You do all the things that she does, put out all the specials she does. And she's funny. Yeah. Whitney's very funny. And she's funny on her podcast. Sure, she interviews Paris Hilton. If you, if you, think, if I, you think if I had access to Paris Hilton, I wouldn't fucking interview her? I would. I would. <laughs> She's, uh, yeah, she's part Hollywood. She's a star. She's not like a, she's not like a, a renegade comic like me doing my podcast in my apartment. But guess what? I also don't have 30 million fucking dollars. Okay. I'm pushing the cart for the horse here. Patreon.com slash Yanni Longboy. Yanni Long Days. Join it. We're trending up big. Oh yeah. Oh, people love the new bonus episodes right. on the set. So patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. Five dollars, just join. Five dollars a month. I'm gonna make if I could make it four ninety nine to trick you, I would, but <laughs> Patreon doesn't allow it. It's it's even numbers only. If I could use that trick, but I can't. Did Substack make you an offer? So, Substack <laughs> at the end goes, Do you wanna join for sixty five thousand dollars? And I was like, You really don't understand the world of podcasting. Sixty five even I wouldn't join for sixty five thousand dollars. <laughs> They wanted, yeah, they offered like 65,000 upfront money. And I'm going like, come on, guy. Yeah. If I, but I tell you what, if I continue to get banned from YouTube, Substack, <laughs> bring, 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 <laughs> hi. It would be a little different reason than Tim. Tim would get the money and go, YouTube, who tube? I would get the money and go, I have no tube. So I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm jazzed about it. I'm psyched about the move to Substack. The exposure is going to be great. I'm with it. I'm with it. You know? They always tell you on exposure. Exposure yeah. and also the, the, 
the meaning behind it. Like, right. look what we're doing. Right, right, we're right. disrupting the thing, which is true, and we like it, and it's great for journalists. But mm -hmm. I also don't know if journalists and comedians should be in the same place. <laughs> I'm kind of tired of these editorialized pieces. I really kind of am, you know? Like, just get back in your lane and let the comedians say garbage. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to editorialize. Just tell me the facts and let me decide. All right, let me decide. Okay? That's what I prefer. So it was, a, it was a very fruitful trip to Los Angeles. Also did Burt Kreischer's podcast. Um, that'll be coming out. Cheeto Santino's. And we shot a sketch with the Babylon Bee. Yeah. Babylon Bee. The Babylon mm. Bee. Now, they're like the Christian onion. <laughs> Am I Christian? Sure. Why not? I grew up Christian. I don't know. Are they born again? I don't know what they are, but I know their last question in the podcast was, do I accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And nobody laughed. <laughs> So, but it was a great episode and they're very funny. Uh -huh. They do a lot of funny stuff. And uh, we did a sketch. We shot a sketch where I play Hunter Biden as Bob Ross painting because Hunter Biden's now a painter yeah. selling his paintings for a lot of money uh, with all his artistic talent and no formal training. Some nice watercolors. Some nice watercolors, dude. Hunter Biden. He's, <laughs> if you watch his interview, have you ever watched an interview with him? No. Just eyes are wide open and he, he's just... Yeah, you know, yeah. So I, I did smoke a little Parmesan cheese here and there. That was, there's this one interview was great where he talks about smoking Parmesan cheese. He's like, it's so desperate. I ran out of crack and I, I found there was, Parme there was Parmesan cheese flakes on the floor and I smoked those. Close enough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, how's a crack out? Here's the thing. And you, you know, it's funny, you can't find any, uh, you, you Google Hunter Biden, it like Donald Trump Jr. comes up. Mm -hmm. It's like Hunter Biden is a very uh, compromising figure. For, for his daddy, you know? Also, Hunter Biden, his brother died, and then he started banging his brother's wife. <laughs> well, none of this is true. You, no, that's true. No, I know, I'm just saying for YouTube. Oh, for YouTube, oh yeah, allegedly, <laughs> I heard. He started banging his dead brothers. I mean, yeah. dude, talk about lack of guy code. Mm -hmm. If that was on MTV, they'd go, Andrew Schultz would go, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> It's breaking guy code, y'all. Um, I mean, dude, that's the ultimate break of guy code. Your your wit your brother's widow? Mm. But that's even the least of it. Let's talk about yeah, the Burisma board. I mean, what's a crackhead doing investing in a Ukrainian company? How did that happen? What Ukrainian company put Hunter Biden on the board <laughs> <laughs> because he earned it? I mean are we stupid? Are we stupid to suggest that perhaps foreign multinational corporations are interested in currying favor with the vice president by putting their fucking crackhead son, <laughs> admitted crackhead son on the board? You know, the guy who can't keep track of a fucking laptop because he's he's presently sleeping in a DC crack den, <laughs> sharing a crack pipe with Mary and Barry. <laughs> Let's look at these paintings. I mean, it looks it looks like it's COVID under a microscope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got some geometric abstraction. Oh, uh, look at that! It looks like Joan Moreau, just like Joan Moreau. And if you don't know who Joan Moreau is, he gets smarter. Yeah, look at this one. That one's actually pretty cool. You like that one? Yeah, you? No? You're the artist. It's nice. What'd, yeah. what'd you take? It's nice. I like it. What would you pay for it? Is it worth as much as a cartoon gorilla that uh, Justin Bieber paid $1.3 million for? <laughs> hey, Warhol has said it best. Yeah. Art is what you can get away with. Art is what you can get away with. For sure. For sure. Mark Palmieri, I'm not going to lie. I would like to build a snowman with Hunter Biden. <laughs> I uh, I suspect that the snow may not be made out of water. <laughs> uh, the Random Hero 77 says, Hunter Biden hits that pipe like an Apache preparing for war. It's what it is. The kid likes the pipe. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Charlie Stevens 13 says, Ukrainian women are hot. That is true. <laughs> yes. And Coffee and Cat says, if that was on Guy Code, Chrissy D would say that doesn't go against Guy Code if she was Puerto Rican. 
Oh, boy. Giannis, can you talk about the convoy in Ottawa, Canada? It's madness here. Absolutely. Um, Macho Martinez. Great name. <laughs> Macho Martinez. From Canada? Macho no, Martinez. No, Macho oh. Martinez says, Hunter Biden smokes crack to enter another dimension to attend a family reunion barbecue. Um, I like the name. Macho Martinez, your name was better than the tweet. <laughs> Omar as well said, did you move, did your monkey move when you watched Whitney take a dump? No, it didn't. It did not. <laughs> Surprisingly, it did not. <laughs> yeah, so Hunter Biden. Um, yeah, so the Canadian truck drivers, are, are there American truck drivers driving in to Canada, right, who are protesting Trudeau's mandate? And Trudeau called it a fringe protest, but media outlets are now uh, reporting that it's 10,000 truck drivers who uh, are upset with the mandate. And I believe the mandate says you have to be vaccinated, fully vaccinated to drive into Canada, right? No and so my favorite part, this not getting bogged down in this stuff we're all sick of. My favorite part of this story for me where the comedy is, is that Justin Trudeau called it a fringe he was some fringe elements you know just a couple of nazis three or four with tiki torches <laughs> who are showing up in ottawa the capital um um you know i'm just gonna be moved to a neutral location just as a precaution <laughs> you know they moved him to a neutral location because there was fear uh that some of these protesters may be showing up at uh, politicians houses people are upset People are upset at this stage of the game. A um, little bit, a little bit. Yeah. You know, this prolonged life at all costs, at all costs, uh, has to uh, be reexamined because uh, if we're a true democracy, people are not happy. People have kind of had enough. And at this point, it's safe to assume probably almost everyone has a prior infection at least. So... Why is that not being counted as, you know, resist, you know, a, a bulwark against COVID, you know, especially since prior, a prior infection is better than a vaccine. They know now prior infection better than just a vaccine. The prior infection plus vaccine is the best. So, you know, all of those should be considered, you know, and if you don't want to get vaccinated at this point, you know, it's like. What can you do? I understand the concern for new variants or whatever, but the, the, you can't avoid this. This can't be stopped. The mandate, it doesn't work. It's going to get everywhere. You know, it's a global world now. Everything's moving around. You can only slow, you can only, basically you're just, you're basically doing the saving private Ryan at this point. <laughs> it's saving private Ryan where you're sacrificing like 10 soldiers so this one fucking mom can have one son come home. So 10 people are dying to save one person uh, for for the optics, you know, it's like we it, we're, we can't go into three years. A capitalist system can't survive this. One that can survive it better is communism. <laughs> and why is that? Because the people are being starved anyway. <laughs> the government's in control anyway. So, in a way, you have to start going. Look, we're a free world, you know. Um, the Sophie's choice has to go the other way now. Maybe. But there's nothing to be there's nothing I can decide on that. I'm just saying, hey man, do what you think is best. Testing. There's ways to keep the world open. Like the Kyrie Irving situation is ridiculous. It's like it's the ridiculous. guy doesn't want to get vaccinated. Yeah. Okay. So test him every time he gets there. He tests positive for COVID. Guess what? He has to quarantine 40 days. He's on the he's on the protocol list. And that's it. That's what the NFL was doing. There was no there there wasn't that big of a deal in the NFL. They test 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 test. If he if he tests COVID, 14 days off or 10 days or whatever it was, boom. And then they shortened it cuz like they had no players. That's fine. Keep doing that. And then the guys get infected, that means that they have a they have a bulwark. They have a bulwark against it. They have antibodies against it. Let them let them get back on the field. They're healthy athletes, you know? It's like uh, and I look, I have a lot of sympathy because I know this is hard to manage when you're managing a global pandemic and you do want to protect people's lives. 
I applaud, I applaud the efforts for that. And I understand uh, the nurses and doctors being overwhelmed. I understand that this is all of Sophie's choice. But to say that this was managed well by the bureaucrats and politicians is a lie. Is a lie. They have resources. They could have allocated them differently. They could have made different calls on what to do. Um, they could have not lied about the mask. And why is Fauci on TV at all? You're a scientist, dude. You should have a PR department talking. Or a president. There should be representatives talking. You meet with them, they talk. Why are you on every fucking morning show? Put the lab coat on. <laughs> you didn't buy his bobblehead? Huh? You didn't buy his bobblehead? He has up? a bobblehead too? I mean, yeah. You know, there's certain people in these towns that are just, yes, Fauci. Thank you, Fauci. Thank you for these mashed potatoes, Fauci. <laughs> Before we go to bed, we just want to thank Fauci who would protect us from all future variants. Hopefully those variants will come so I continue to feel good about myself by yelling at people. You know. And then on the flip side, you got Kid Rock who's, you know, pandering to his base, going, I will not perform. Because, you know, Joe Rogan took some uh, blow and so did Tim for performing in cities that had mandates. Tim, uh, Tim Pool got on Tim, Tim Pool. He's a, you know, he's an internet guy. He got on Tim Dillon because Tim was doing shows <clears throat> like in New York where there was a vaccine mandate. And Tim's going like, I don't control the policy. Like, I'm going to make money, dude. Like, whatever. And then Joe Rogan performed at the Garden. They had a vaccine mandate there, and uh, he took a little, you know, from the extremists on uh, extremists on the right. But Kid Rock knows his audience. <laughs> Kid Rock. Kid Rock ain't trying to win over the Boston libs. <laughs> Kid Rock to cancel tour stops at venues with COVID vaccine mandates. Let me, let's be real. What stops at that tour did Kid Rock really have in cities that had a vaccine mandate? Who's going to see Kid Rock at the Barclays Center? <laughs> Who's going to see Kid Rock in Cambridge, Massachusetts? Who's going to see Kid Rock in Vermont? <laughs> Who's going to see Kid Rock at the Bowl in Los Angeles? So this is what you call a nice little PR move because you ain't selling tickets in those areas anyway, Kid Rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Pink Flu... Kid Rock will only be performing at the Pink Lagoon <laughs> Crockpit Flamingo. And then we rented out another uh, venue. My cousin Dale owns an airport hangar in Jacksonville. Kid Rock will be performing for people who have COVID presently only. We support Sarah Palin. She's up and moving with the virus. Sarah Palin has COVID and she's going out to eat without a mask in New York. Um, that's making a big story. She's tested positive and she continues to go out. She's not quarantining. Um, and she's been seen with uh, Ron Duguay. Am I correct? The former playboy hockey player who's now has got to be in his 60s. Handsome dude. Yeah. I mean, the kid has ripped through a pass. I mean, he's one of those like, he's like a Derek Jeter type. Ron Duguay. I think he works for MSG now. So he's a New York local hero. I think he was on the Rangers, right? He was always known for his like quaff hair. You know, he was married to a model. He dated a lot of like gorgeous women. And uh, Sarah Palin is what you call uh, just a piece. You know, Glenn Rice, the basketball player, fucked Sarah Palin when they were at Michigan. Um, she likes guys <laughs> and she's single now. Sarah Palin is on the market. She's divorced. You know, and you can't just go hunting for dudes in Alaska. Okay? There's more moose than there are dudes. So she came down to New York, like good looking people do, and now she's going on dates with Ron Duguay without a mask on with COVID. Now, the reason why Ron Duguay doesn't mind that he's sitting with her because she has COVID is because Ron Duguay has every venereal disease in the book. So it's what you call a detente. He's like, hey, if you give me COVID, I'm giving you herpes, whatever. Let's swim in each other's pools. Not a big deal. They're already murky. <laughs> Lauren Boebert is the biggest political piece. Point to be made. We're going to do that. We're going we're gonna to do a long day's vote who the biggest political piece is. AOC is going to win. 
but we'll figure out where number two, three, four, and five. Sarah Palin is a piece. She's in her 50s. You know, she's got a sweet time. <laughs> uh, the Random Hero 77 says, I'd lick Sarah Palin's fork after she left the table. <laughs> <laughs> J. Drew 9 says she's at menopause, though. You know he's not pulling out, cuz. It's a benefit. Yeah. That's a nice benefit. Yeah. Uh, the Vinyl Vine says, I want a threesome, Sarah Palin and Loa Bobart. A kid can dream. Um, it's true. So Sarah Palin is taking New York by storm, spreading COVID everywhere. Um, so it's what it is. I just am worried about the future because Justin Bieber is buying a $1.3 million NFT. Jason Momoa is in a $750,000 caravan. What is he in a? An RV. An RV, dude. And everyone else is paying like $900 at the pump. <laughs> they can't. You go to the supermarket, half the stuff is out. We got a supply chain problem. And inflation. And people need to get uh, find employment. And Jason Momoa has a $750,000 RV. Hopefully he doesn't have an Apple Watch <laughs> because then they'll be able to locate him and rob him. You know what they're doing now? You know what criminals are doing? Do you know the Apple? There's an Apple, oh, yeah. what is it called? The tag. The Apple tag. So what the criminals are doing now, because the Apple tags are not expensive. They're, they're like, like 20 bucks. They're like 20 bucks. So they get an Apple tag, and what they do is they glue it onto your car, and then they follow you home and rob your house. That's fucked up. Yeah. So Apple didn't see that coming. Criminals always find the way. So air tag. It's an air tag. So thirty dollars. They're thirty bucks. So criminals are doing the math. They're good businessmen, and they're saying my overhead is thirty bucks. You can get a pack of four for a hundred. Yeah, I'll put up to. I'll. 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 I'll, I'll, I'll. I'll take my, you know, I'll play the numbers. I'll take, I'll put four out there and maybe one will drive home, you know, and I'll just be able to enter their garage behind them. <laughs> so if someone sees Jason Momoa up there, please air tag him. <laughs> That's bullying and harassment. I'm going to get, yeah, bullying and harassment. It's a joke. Don't, you know, first of all, he's not going any place you're going to, Jason Momoa is not going to, you, you know, he's not taking his RV to, uh, to a high crime area. He's at a friend's house yeah, in no, Beverly the, Hills. Yeah, kids at a friend's house in his RV sleeping uh, in the parking area. <laughs> so Jason Momoa, the only piece who's going to air tag Jason Momoa is a lot of girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but just so you know, and he, again, YouTube, this is news. You bully. I'm not revealing anything. That RV is worth a million dollars. <laughs> Three quarters of a million dollars. So... You know, maybe don't do anything to Jason Momoa. We don't want to do that to the ladies' dreams. But if you want a million-dollar RV, it'll cost you 30 bucks to air tag him if you see him outside of a brunch spot. Now, he broke up with Lisa Bonet, and so now he's, like, he's living in an RV. The reason he's living in an RV is because it's just hard for actors to get work right now. <laughs> he's just finding it hard. Erica Jane is now free. Erica Jane is free. Erica Jane's lawyers and Tom Giardi's divorce legal was everything we know so far. Us Weekly. So apparently she's been found uh, not liable, right? Like she didn't, she's basically off the hook. Why is she famous? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> That's how, if you want to know if someone is a closet there's no reason to be a closet homosexual anymore. Everyone thinks it's lit. But if you want to know if someone is, if they don't know, basically you just said I'm straight. You just yelled I'm straight. <laughs> okay? Because the only people who know who Erica Jane is are ladies and Andy Cohen. Andy Cohen. Okay? You know what I'm talking about. She's a real housewife. Oh. She's a real housewife who decided to have a music career. Um, she's like in her 40s or whatever. And Tom Giardi was funding her music career He's a famous lawyer, famous, famous lawyer in Los Angeles who was representing like victims, like real victims. Like if you're a company, you got burned, your house got burned by chemicals, whatever. And he was stealing their money. He was commingling their money in his account and stealing it uh. and using it to fund 
her music career. She claimed, I didn't know what was going on. Right? She was taking private jets everywhere or whatever. And um, her music career stank. You know, but like gay guys loved it. You know, nobody likes bad music more than gay guys because they just love the fabulousness of it. Yeah. You know, they love like lip singing contests and, you know, whatever. <laughs> Drag shows where people, it's a lip singing. They're lip singing. Yeah. I mean, it's impressive to see a six foot two dude in heels do a split, but <laughs> watching him lip sync, that's some Millie Vanilli shit. Yeah. But yeah. they love the fabulousness of it, you know? Madonna's not the best singer either. They do love Gaga. She can sing. I'll yeah. give them that. But a lot of their entertainment is awful. Okay, Erica Jane is awful, and her consents were just gay guys going crazy, right? But women loved her because she was so real. <laughs> Erica was so real. Um, so she's off the hook. And Ch Tom Giardi, uh, he claims dementia, like now, <laughs> which uh, is interesting because my mother ha has advanced dementia, Alzheimer's, what you call it. And, you know, as far as I know, one of the consequences of dementia is not commingling millions of dollars and giving it to your wife for a music career. I thought it was wandering, but I stand corrected. You know, the consequences of dementia manifest themselves differently in each person, apparently. And with Tom Giardi, that man happened to be stealing millions of dollars from poor victims who he was managing the money of. Right. I mean, these people got, dude, what he did was horrible. He robbed money from like real victims, uh, you know, like burn victims, like real people who sued major companies and won big money. Right. And he was thought of as like a hero before this because he did that. But it, as it turns out, he's a bad guy. <laughs> or I'm sorry, he just has dementia. <laughs> <laughs> so Erica Jane's free, ladies. You can love her again. She's free to continue her music career. And I'm sure she'll be back on Real Housewives to sit down with the ladies and tell it like it is. <laughs> and she's just an innocent bystander. She didn't suspect or know anything at all about it. You know, she was just living in a $50 million mansion in Beverly Hills and flying in private jets. And, you know, she just figured her lawyer husband, who definitely married her for her personality. <laughs> So wait, you know all this because... I know all this because of my wife. Ah, okay. My wife. My wife's a huge Real Housewives fan. Okay. God bless the Real Housewives. It gives ladies like a break to like their brain. Like they, ladies work hard. Mothers, mothering is a job. Ladies are different, dude. What do we do? We watch sports to null mm -hmm. our brains. Yeah, no, no. This is female sports. They sit there and there's like a glaze over them and they're just <laughs> relaxed. They think about nothing. They love the drama. You know, they love it. Hmm. You know, I love it. Andy Cohen and Real Housewives and Bravo, they do a real service. <laughs> That's really like women's yoga, mind yoga. Yeah. So my wife told me all about it and I thought it was a hilarious story because my wife loves Erica Jane and she was really like, a lot of women were like, no, not Erica. She had nothing to do with it. I know she didn't know. And I was just having them going, fuck that gold digging whore. She knew every step of the way and she's like, stop it. And we had fun with it. We had a lot of fun with it. Um, because that's what she is. She's a gold digging whore. Let's just be honest. <laughs> well, guys... She's not with Tom, Tom Giardi because of his Pete Davidson dick. <laughs> She's not with him because of his youthful six pack. The guy's thirty years older than her. They're a charming couple. Yeah, they're a charming couple. Just like uh, Anna Nicole Smith and the ninety nine year old billionaire. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, sweetie. <laughs> yeah. So she's free. She's free. My good friend Joe Rogan under fire right now uh, you know it's bad when Henry and Meghan come after you right so Prince Henry the defrocked prince <laughs> the defrocked prince to go live as the pauper as Mark Twain's pauper who gave in his life of luxury gave up his life of luxury to live with a B-level actress in California and enjoy their multi-million dollar Netflix deal. Pete Davidson, Holly Madison is regretting her life choices for clout right now. That's from Spanglish. I don't know what that means. Mr. Colin Cow says we could binflation in Venezuela is so bad right now people are literally literally throwing away cash like it's garbage as of last week one US dollar 
One U.S. dollar is 463,000 bol- bolivars, worse than real cheap gas like Venezuela. Yeah, it's bad over there. It's bad. Thank you for that hilarious comment <laughs> in comment roulette. So Megan and Henry are coming after rogues. Uh, so it looks like they have a deal with Spotify also for $25 million. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. Very earned. Very earned. I mean, you know, Megan and Megan and Henry have been podcasting for decades. <laughs> so very well earned. Oh, God. So what are they doing? Threatening to go off? Please, please. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, Spotify's probably like, yes. <laughs> Spotify's probably like, okay. The couple has reported $25 million deal. You know what? Storm, storm Buckingham Palace. Please, guys. In what world did uh, would Meghan Merkel get $25 million if she wasn't married to this redhead? Who wants to hear from these two? Uh, which people are tuning into this podcast? I'll tell you who. It's these uselessly educated coastal elites that are going to tune into this. Who else is tuning into this? The working class? <laughs> Who's turning into this? Minorities? Who's turning into what listen to this podcast that they deserve $25 million? They also, what's their deal with Netflix, too? So that's 25 mil from Spotify. I get it, dude. Listen, Prince Henry's the smart one, right? Because his brother is sitting there with a goddamn taxpayer salary of probably 300 pounds, which is too much to begin with. Here, Henry is making millions. Does that number say 112 million? Yeah. That's pounds. So that's even more than dollars. I think so. So are you telling me that Prince Henry and Meghan Merkel have a 112 million pound deal with Netflix on top of a $25 million deal with Spotify? It's funny. It's funny that you guys are angry at Joe Rogan. <laughs> Let's be angry at Joe Rogan. Let's be angry at Joe Rogan, who actually has millions and millions of listeners. Let's be angry at Joe Rogan. Not the media for and the networks for hiring Meghan Merkel and Prince Henry. What are they going to talk about? What's their podcast and their series going to be about? Here's their elevator pitch right here. You see yeah. this? Let's see. We created Archwell Audio to make sure that we can elevate voices that maybe aren't being heard and hear people's stories. Okay, I got an idea, Netflix. Instead of hiring the former prince of England and Meghan Merkel, why don't you just elevate the stories? (laughs) Why, what makes Meghan Merkel and Prince Henry diversity producers? When did they become a champion of the unsung and underserved. <laughs> so you gave them $112 million so they can break off a little piece of that and give it to Spike Lee's second cousin <laughs> for, a, for a bad movie. And you're, you're angry at Joe Rogan. There should have been a walk, there should have been a walk out at Netflix over this deal. <laughs> Talk about pushing down the throat of the people something they didn't ask for. Just put this in the bin with James Corden. Nobody's asking for it. Nobody wants it. Nobody's watching it. If he's not lip syncing next to Lady Gaga, (laughs) nobody's tuning in. And they're not tuning in for James Corden. You could put any closeted homosexual in a sedan next to Lady Gaga singing her song and people will tune in. Yo, this is their website. Here's their website. Archwell Productions <laughs> was created by the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. There, people of the people. There's no projects on here. There's this, no projects to like produce a, programming <laughs> that informs. Have they ever made a program in their life? <laughs> Have they ever done a project in their life? Has Prince Henley produced any contact in his life? Has Meghan Merkel done anything besides read lines on the show Suits? <laughs> oh, here's one. Heart of Invictus is a docu-series that will, future, future, that will showcase powerful stories of resilience and hope from competitors on their journeys to Invictus. Game the Hague, 
Games The Hague 2020. You know what the people want. Yeah, it sounds like a winner. Yeah, this series is being produced in partnership with the Invictus Game Foundation and comes from the Oscar-winning team of director Orlando Vaughn and producer. So, very important that Netflix didn't give the money directly to them. It's very important they had Henry and Megan in there um, to allocate whatever's left over after their, I'm sure, meals at barbecue restaurants in black neighborhoods. <laughs> How about instead of, hey, hey, how about this? How about this? Megan, Megan and Henry. Instead of elevating voices with your $112 million deal from Netflix, that of course, no part of which will be spent on your, uh, let's say, luxurious housing and transportation. How about you just go buy a house, buy a house in Southeast DC, deep in there. Deep in Southeast. Okay, how about that? How about that? Wouldn't that be better for underserved populations? For you to take your, to eat your lunch in Southeast DC every day? Because let me guess, you're eating at Ocean Prime in LA, and then you go to Vegas, let me let me guess. You're at Avra, where a piece of fish costs $100. Mm -hmm. Let me guess, let me guess, you are circling, let me guess, you're frequenting underserved communities on the regular and pumping money into that system. Let me guess, let me guess, let me guess, you're staying at the Ramada <laughs> in Newark. Let me guess. Let me guess. You just bought a house in Patterson, New Jersey. Let me guess. <laughs> Let me guess. An attached house. In yeah. Bay no. We're 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 elevating voices. We're elevating voices. Here's another one. Pearl. Okay. So here's another one of their projects, which will come out, I guess, at some point. Netflix doesn't really care. They just got the press release that we're giving them money. Uh, I'm, I, how fun? Uh, Meghan Merkel. Prince Henry has nothing to do with entertainment or content. He's a former prince. Why is he getting $112 million to make entertainment? Um, Pearl is the working title. <laughs> you know what that means? They're thinking about it. The working title means <laughs> it hasn't really passed the idea phase yet, even though they got $112 million. I just produced a whole show right here for over an hour, and I did it. <laughs> but guess what? If you gave me $112 million to this with an open-ended deadline, this episode would come out Working title, working time frame, is an animated series that centers on the heroic adventures of a 12-year-old girl, let me guess, she ain't white, who is inspired by influential women from history. The Duchess of Sussex, will you stop? They're no longer the, and I'm the Prince of Brooklyn, will serve as an executive producer. So important she oversees it with all her experience. It's really just her and Steven Spielberg who have that level of experience producing, <laughs> producing hits, you know? Uh, will serve as an executive producer alongside David Furnish, um, and Carolyn Soper, who are real producers, and Emmy Award-winning filmmakers Liz Garbus and Dan Coogan <laughs> as the showrunner. Like many girls, Haraj, our heroine Pearl, is on a journey of self-discovery. Oh, my God. Very important right now while people are eating their shoes. <laughs> people are eating their sweaters like moths. Let's, let's hear another story about self-discovery from a privileged girl who's got time to sit around and think about what she wants to do and who she is as she tries to overcome life's daily challenges. Okay, so let me, let me get this. This takes place in Venezuela? Because um, those are real challenges. I'm thrilled that Archwell Productions, blah, 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 uh, which showcases, oh, we get no further information than that. That's specific. That's a specific pitch. That probably took days and days and days to work out. A lot of meetings. A lot of meetings to work out to work out that what they call in the business one sheet. <laughs> this was a year in the making. Probably. A year in the making. Uh, it's a it's a self discovery story from some woman. <laughs> I'm delighted we're able to announce it today. I mean, this is that's a premature announcement. Oh, everything is optics, man, you know? So uh, 
we we really look forward to these series from from the former prince and the duchess or sussex of mussex and whatever they're coming up with i'm sure they're hard at work every day hard at work in that writer's room they're hard at work punching keys on the computer to get these scripts ready <laughs> for archerwell audio this is for spotify yeah this is spotify for their Spotify, they got two deals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Rogan got $100 million. He had the largest podcast in the world, 10 years of experience. He's the face of MMA, sells out comedy uh, venues, arenas, with comedy that he writes himself. And he got a deal with a proven audience of millions and millions and millions. They got two deals uh, worth... 112 million from Netflix that's Joe Rogan's deal <laughs> with zero zero audience and zero projects <laughs> you know <laughs> nobody knew who Meghan Merkel was has there been who's the is there a bigger story of popping on the scene than Meghan Merkel who just has popped on the scene who has the most unearned fame right now? Oh, Kardashians got lines. Yeah, no, I no, mean, no. Kim Kardashian's going to law school or some shit. They got at least they got you know. Who who has more unearned recognition than Meghan Merkel? She's number one by number far. one by far. Number one by far. I don't even think there's another contender who could come close. She is the Michael Jordan of unearned recognition. <laughs> You know, she was on the show Suits. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that comes to mind is Pamela Anderson when she was on Baywatch. Oh, but Pamela Anderson had some nice, you know. Yeah, no. No, but she was on a show that was a hit. Right. Baywatch was at least a hit. Suits wasn't a hit. Suits was like a <laughs> Suits was like a niche hit. Right. It wasn't right. game. Baywatch was like the Game of Thrones of its day. No, I know. No, David I mean, Hasselhoff. I, I can't. I mean, it was a anyone. shit show, but I mean, you know. I wouldn't even say Pamela Anderson comes close. She, no. she at least she at, at least she showed up and like was a star of the show, and then yeah, you know, and then also she did a, a sex tape is content. She was the first. She had and she had a the most beautiful puss puss in history. Yeah, I mean you could nominate just so you just the same way you could nominate Meghan Merkel. Are people seeing my slippers? Uh, yeah, <laughs> just the same way you could nominate Meghan Merkel as the Michael Jordan of unearned recognition. You could nominate. Pamela Anderson as having the cutest <laughs> puss puss. I mean, neatest. It looks like your wife made a sandwich and it did it, it. The neat, the meat is just tucked in nice in the bread. <laughs> oh. I mean, can, you want to pull it out? No. no. Oh, <laughs> what are you pulling out? I was just googled who's the least talented famous woman. Yeah, well, it's it's Meghan Markle. I would say Meghan Markle. Paris Hilton's on here. Paris Hilton's like a business mogul, though. Mm -hmm. Like, she invented reality TV. You can't say that. She's, you know, Paris Hilton, like, you know, Paris Hilton's like the progenitor. She taught. Mm -hmm. Like, she, like, showed a whole generation how to how to make your life a show, you know? <laughs> they put Pitbull on here. <laughs> From the least what can you women. do? Dale. <laughs> <laughs> he was a big Maurice fan, so I'll skip it. Yeah, this list is bullshit. Ashes Simpson. Who else they got? Lana Del Rey. I mean, come on. They that's sell, yeah. These, Lana Del Rey's got good songs. They sell tickets. Yeah, Jennifer Lopez is a star. I mean, that's ridiculous. This list sucks. I mean, and Meghan Merkel's not even on that list? No. Oh, this is music. That's just because it's the music industry. Oh, okay. Yeah. But that list is stupid. That list is stupid. So, uh, oh boy. Prince. And, uh, so, are Prince Henry and Meghan Merkel, are they considering like giving up their Spotify deal too? You're just, this is just going to make Rogan bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, you know? It says they voice concerns. They voice concern. Again, these they love to be specific. We voice concern. We're concerned. We're, you know, guess what, guys? We're concerned. We're concerned that you got $112 million from Netflix to produce bullshit. That's money that could have went to an underserved community, you know? I won't take any of these people seriously until they put their feet on the ground uh, uh, in the places, in the places where the people live, who they purport to be advocates for, 
Why would you do that when you can make a cartoon about it? When you can make a cartoon <laughs> about it that you get paid very, very well. Your money goes in. Or if they gave all the money away and made it, then I would. But until then, I'm not taking you seriously because I know what you're up to. I know what you're up to. You're full of shit. You don't go anywhere near low income areas. You don't go anywhere near middle class areas. When do you think you're gonna see Meghan Merkel and Prince Henry get a fucking meal at Elia in Bay Ridge? When do you think you'll ever see them in Park Slope? Which is middle upper class. You won't even see them there. These people are hanging out only in Beverly Hills, Newport, Rhode Island, wherever else. So it's just, it's it's a joke. At this point, people are onto it. And that's why they love Joe Rogan so much. Because Joe Rogan's just honest. Joe Rogan has whatever his beliefs are, whatever. He had that dude on. Why are you mad at Joe Rogan? Why aren't you mad at Malone? Joe Rogan just let him talk. He's like, oh, because he's platforming this guy. So what? Maybe so many people wouldn't believe what he's saying if you guys weren't all over the place with how you've handled everything and how much lying you do, okay? You don't think a, an, an immunologist or an epidemiologist or a virologist publicly stating that um, it's okay to leave your house and gather in large groups if you're protesting is okay, but don't go to church or don't go to work and they say, yeah, we scientifically support that. You don't think people are going to be like, maybe these scientists are bullshit? You did it to yourself. You did it to yourself. Because a lot of you were scared to admit, and that's what happened. They were scared to say that people should not be gathering to protest police brutality at the time or whatever it was. They didn't want to just come out and say, yes, that's a health risk for COVID and you shouldn't do it. So they just said... They go, yes, but it's, they go, yeah, there's a risk, but racism's a big, I think I even remember hearing racism is a bigger, bigger uh, health priority or health risk, right? How did they phrase it? They said, uh, like that. Some bullshit. yeah, it's a bigger global pandemic. And so people know it's bullshit. Yeah. You don't have to be a racist to see that that's bullshit. All you have to do is just be like, you're being politically correct. You're scared. So you're saying this and you're lying. So why should I trust you when you say something else? If you're clearly, if what you're saying doesn't make sense. So you're saying I could go outside and spread COVID if the cause is good? You get it. Let's go to our uh, small business sponsors of which there's three open slots left. There's three open spots right now. For your small business sponsorship, if you want to get on there, patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. Let's go to our small business sponsors. We want to welcome a new small business shout out, Longshore Coffee. Dude, send me coffee. Send me coffee. I'm going to privately DM me. Jesse wants coffee. I want coffee. We're going to sell this. Let's sell it right, baby. <laughs> I want to taste this. Stephen Miller. Welcome, brother. Welcome. Good to have you. Longshore Coffee. Um... This kid went to high school. He was a history teacher, left to start a longshore. He's a hyenas fan. Good taste. History hyenas fan. Um, and he's stoked to be part of the Fediverse. <laughs> Fediverse is catching on, baby. I don't think we can get rid of that name. No, no. So uh, it's a new small batch coffee, coffee roastery located in Providence, Rhode Island. I like what it sounds like, dude. Offering premium blends and simple origin coffees. They ship nationwide and offer free local delivery in Rhode Island. For denizens, if you don't know that word, get smarter. You know, you can improve your vocabulary by listening to this podcast. <laughs> denizens is a good word. Denizen means you frequent the area. You travel in that area. <laughs> denizens of the Fediverse. He's offering 15% off at checkout with the promo code FUMES, of course. So longshorecoffee.com, use the code FUMES. Dude, send me coffee, let me sample it. If it's good, I will sell the shit out of this. I love that you've done this. Uh, oh, he goes, I'd love to send a couple coffee bags to you and to Jesse as a token of appreciation. Is there a P.O. box or agent's office? Yeah, that P.O. box is called Jesse's house. <laughs> <laughs> He's not worried about people showing up. <laughs> I can send it to you. Thanks for doing what you do. 
It's not his house. I'm joking. I look forward to supporting you. Look, look, I just read his first message for the first time. I love this. It sounds delicious, dude. If you got the roastery right there in Providence, Rhode Island, I imagine those coffee beans are good. Um, send us that. I want to taste it. But if you want your coffee right now, I want to support this dude. Longshorecoffee.com, 15% off with the promo code FUMES. I can't wait to taste it. Nate Linder, we love you to death, dog. All right? Nate Linder is your social media guru. Okay, he offers solutions such as Google ads, SEO, social media ads, streaming, TV. Are you going to give me free social media advice? I mean, what's the deal? Give me free stuff. Give me free stuff. Okay, I'm, look at this deal you're getting. Jesse comes from an advertising background. If you've canceled this, it means your business is really shit. <laughs> I mean, this is a steal of a lifetime. You're going out to thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And I will continue to lock you in no matter how big the show gets because I'm fucking stupid. <laughs> so if you cancel here, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but it's funny. This is like small business survivor. We're going to see who's still around. <laughs> we lost a few, yeah. but Nate Linder's doing good. Nate, give me some, help us on here. Help yeah. long days. And yeah. so I could sell you even better. Yeah. Yeah. He works with clients to fully understand their business. You know my business, Nate. <laughs> you know my business. Okay. Yeah. He managed over 5 million in digital ads. Hello. <laughs> Where's my free shit? I ain't fucking paying, Nate. You're getting a great deal here. Can you get on the horn with YouTube? Get on the fucking horn with YouTube and fix it, baby. So go to natelinder.com. All right. So look, for example, um, the sponsor we just read, right? Any of the other sponsors, you should be hitting up Nate Linder to help you get the word out. This is what this is about. It's a community. You guys should be helping each other for the free, all of you. Who is not hit, hitting up Nate, Minder, Nate, Nate Linder and giving him at least a one month try? Give him a one month try. See how he does. Help him grow your business. NateLinder.com, okay? He is a social media consultant. Hit him up, dude. Go to NateLinder.com and, and, and talk to him. See what he can do. Grant Trower is your guy. Specifically, if you're moving to South Florida, which everyone seems to be doing, <laughs> hit him up. 954-591-6465. GrantTrower.TheAtlanticRealtyGroup.com. This kid will put you on the beach. He'll put you in Hialeah. He'll put you in Fort Lauderdale. Wherever you want to go. If you're moving to South Florida, hit up Grant Trower. And uh, he's the real estate man that will make it happen for you. And similarly, specifically, if you're cashing a check in the, uh, Chris Minetti, I expect to see you at Soul Joe's in Jeffersonville, <laughs> Pennsylvania, February 5th at the show. Chris Minetti. You can, you can wear your gun. You got to do it. If you do that business, kids got a gun on them of all times. Um, this is what Chrissy, this is what Chris Minetti, I have front row seats to see Chrissy's show tonight at the Borgata. Should I wear my long day shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they come in a meet and greet. They come with a meet. Uh oh. Oh. What's going on? Forgot to mention. Ooh, he bought his tickets. They come with a meet and greet. I didn't pay for them. My, ooh, he's charging for meet and greets. Oh. What's the dollars? <laughs> What's the dollars? Get that money. Get that money. Um, get that money. Um, Chris Minetti, hit him up. 215-750-3730. Um, call him. Just call him. That's it. There's a phone number. Chris Minetti, if you need to cash your check in the Philly, South Jersey area. And of course, go see Chrissy. Support Chrissy. Um, Michael Hamlet Jr. Dude, I love this. Uh, have you checked it out? Yeah. Yes. Yes, I have. TheBronxBrand.com. Yeah, um, it's good shit ha, on there. Have you bought anything yet? Not yet. We yeah. should get something together. We should get something up for the studio. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to buy something and put it on the studio. TheBronxBrand.com. The art up there is amazing. I have bought, I bought a shirt on there and um, I'm going to wear it on long days. Um, I got a lot of shirts. I just go to Poshmark and I buy shirts for this show. This one actually, Gus's Fried Chicken from Austin, they gave it to me because the guy was a long days fan and he gave it to me when I was in Austin. It's a delicious fried chicken if you want to go to Gus's. Um, free free promotion. Um, TheBronxBrand.com. Check it out, dude. All these artists. It has it's a it's a website curated for Bronx artists to support Bronx artists. It showcases their work from prints to uh, to 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 t-shirts, you know, hoodies, whatever. 
Um, and it, it's all original art. Your your house should have original art in it. Don't be putting up you no know, freaking Van Gogh posters like you're in college. Go to thebronxbrand.com. You get a 15% discount with the uh, promo code FUMES. Thebronxbrand.com. Support the home of hip hop. Uh, Aaron Lee for the free, which I also love. Uh, I check it out for bands. There's good music up there. For the free dot us. If you're a music fan or if you're going to Hawaii, they list all the local bands where they're playing events. They showcase bands from Hawaii. So for the free dot us. We love you, Aaron Leaf. Um, and then of course, exclusive auto shipping dot com. If you're moving your car anywhere in the country, you hit up Jared. Okay, and you get a free quote anywhere in the world. Hit up Jared Z, exclusiveautoshipping.com to move your car if you're moving and whatever. Now for our newest Patreon members over at patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. All right, welcome our new members to the Fediverse, to the Long Haul Gang, our Long Haulers, our Cyclops Cult followers. We got one, two. His name's one, two. <laughs> we got LB, Aussie Serb. Okay, kids from Australia, he's a Serb. He's in lockdown right now. He'd get arrested if he leaves his house. We got Sean Byrne, uh, Joseph Keeley, Rick Russell, welcome. Chris Bernard, Jesse Rucco. Jesse Rucco. Is that a guy or a girl, you think? We don't know. Abe's Hot Dogs by the Dozen. <laughs> I got a plug in there. It's, uh, yeah, that's smart. <laughs> Thamer Albidi. Albidi. Thamer Albidi. Welcome, Thamer. Kids of Sandra D. Jamie Sanchez. White Walker, Stezzy, Jay Dinkle, Lil TT, <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Williams, John Wegner, Will Ward, The Artist Bones. Welcome, dog. Probably another plug. Mm. Um, well, welcome to the Fediverse. Then, of course, we got Benji, Josh Arthur, Patty O from a Chicago patio. <laughs> That's probably the best one so far. Rick Taylor. Then we got Derek's Floridian Gideon. Love Maurice and don't trust minorities, brother. Oh, no. <laughs> you didn't need that last part. Oh, well, what can you do, brother? <laughs> then we got Christopher Scott Dupay, uh, Logan Morrow, Chris Eagleston, Jeffrey Mason, Owen McCormick, Lindsey Wickham. Brian France, Bus Stop Human. <laughs> Matt Furman. Here's a good one. Oh, my God. Hoping my girlfriend gets COVID so I can convince her to give me a blumpkin. <laughs> then we got the info of the scum. And then we got Tejinder Sandhu. Welcome. Chandler. Uh, Chandler, welcome. Charles S. Bennett Hall, Scotty Coyne, Diego Fumoradana. <laughs> Instead of Maradona, Diego Fumoradana. Like that it. now takes the lead. Oh, yeah. Then we got Terry Nabbit, the Random Hero 77. He was in the uh, comment roulette today. Gabble Yerid, Longshore Coffee. Dude, send me some coffee. I'm going to give you the address. Then we got John Hernandez. Kwame Becker Waganda. Uh, we got Trish Ryder, Lance Conley, Rugby Squibs, Kyle Butterfield, Wei Sean King. That's an old good one. <laughs> then we got Michael Lochner, Blake Jones, Jay Amatangelo. Jay Amatangelo. Jay Amatangelo. That name does, uh, belongs in the side of a van. <laughs> Adam Bibby, TC, Kelly Dubs, G Daddy. Rob Flo, I guess uh, the rap group uh, joined. <laughs> and then we got Mark, Bobby B, Josh Stutman, Keith Anderson, Blast Rider, 1100CC. Okay. Then we got Nate, Joe the Banker. <laughs> Not Joe the Plumber, Joe the Banker. That's funny. That was a good joke that a lot of people would have missed, but I caught it. Joe the Banker instead of Joe the Plumber. Then we got Wesley Aiken and Jesper Jansen. That is a Scandinavian dude or girl. I think it's a dude, Jasper. Yeah, Jas Jasper Jensen. That's how they pronounce it. They spell it Jasper because they're fucking stupid. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. Tell your friends, you remember, the first rule of Long Days is talk about Long Days. The second law, talk about Long Days. You tell one person, we double our numbers just like that. One friend, you get into it. That's all you got to do. We'll see you next week. It's been a long